Yes, this is lecture number three for steel applications for iron and steel making slag. So I want to piggyback on the lecture two that I gave uh, a while ago. In this lecture two, we discussed about you know how we extract the raw materials uh, the, from the earth crust and how we do the extraction and the refining aspect of it. So it was fun lesson yesterday. Today we, we are going to focus on applications for iron and steel making slag. So I want you to pay attention to the, uh, to the lecture. So this lecture will serve you for you to have a comprehensive understanding about the application for iron and steel making slag. So this is actually, it takes place in the uh, Black Swanies. And uh, in, in the consequence lecture, I will discuss about the, uh, the different aspect of Black Swanies, the, the reactions that take place in Black Swanies. So today I'm going to focus on the application for ion and steel making slag. Ion and steel making slag is a byproduct of the ion and steel making process. Slag has traditionally been used as a component of cement and construction aggregates, and NKK has led the industry in promoting the effective use of slag in this lecture. Fine concrete aggregate known as sandy S and slag sand capping material are introduced as a new application of granulated furnace slag. Other innovative use of steel making slag are introduced. Large carbonated slag blocks, called marine blocks, produced by injecting carbon dioxide into slag compact and potassium silicate of fat, uh, potassium silicate fertilizer produced by adding a potassium source to steel making slag. Yes, that is basically what we will discuss intensively today. Let's look at the iron and steel making slag. It's classified as blast furnace slag or steel making slag. Blast furnace slag is generated during the process of reducing iron ore by coke in blast furnace. Its sources are the gag content of iron ore that is constituents of iron ore other than iron and lime content added to adjust the compositions of molten slag. Most blast furnace slag has traditionally been used as a component of cement steel making slag. It's generated in the process of refining hot metal produced by a blast furnace into steel and has been mostly used as road material. Get it? So in this case, the blast furnace the slags are being used to construct road as a road material. A slag basically is uh, a residual of steel making. So the slag it does not go to waste. It is used. It is very vital in steel making because of they are very granulated like cement. So I have talked about it. Let me pick it back on some of this in lecture one when I talk about the slag. So now this we are dealing with the slags in uh, in the uh, blast furnace. So the residual process, the residual uh, things that. Uh, uh, materials that we get from making uh, um, uh, uh, steel from from uh, from the blast furnace is not a waste. It's used. It's very vital. So nothing goes to waste here. So NKK has been actively promoting RD. Has been actively promoting RD. RD aim at creating a new slag based products that meet the needs of society by utilizing this useful constituents of blast furnace and steel making slag. The world leading new steel making technology devaporized by NKK ZSP, which we call the zero slag process, is 
particularly significant in this regard. This technology process to a very low level and also stabilizes the composition of slag of slag generated through a hot metal pretreatment here by expanding the range of slag application, the slow release of potassium silicate fertilizer to in, in, introduce later in this paper in this uh, le lecture. Is typ is the typical example of that is granulated blast furnace slag, sand, which is called uh, sandy S. Let's look at fine concrete aggregate. Availability of a natural sand once believed to be, to be inexhaustible is decreasing year by year. Excavating beach sand has already been prohibited in parts of the inland sea area of Japan. In addition, the durability of concrete structure has become a serious social problem illustrated, illustrated the railroad tunnel collapses on the new Sanyo line. Hence, the social demand of high quality fine concrete aggregate has strengthened. The NKK and its group companies have developed a new technology for producing fine concrete aggregate from granulated blast furnace slag for pro uh, slag. Molten blast furnace slag is tapped from a blast furnace at a temperature of around 1,500 degrees Celsius. It is then quickly cooled by applying pressurized water. The granulated blast furnace slag produced is then slightly crushed to produce particles of a uniform size and shape. A consolidation in, uh, in, inhibit, inhibitor is added, resulting in a fine concrete aggregate. This product is marketed as a granulated blast furnace slag, sand or sandy sand, sandy S. Here I am going to talk about the feature of sandy S. In contrast to a natural sand, sandy S is, is an industrial product produced under strict quality control and has the following features. One, it is compatible with the JIS, with the JIS standard slag-based concrete aggregate. It does not, too, it does not contain substances that have harmful effects on the strength and durability of concrete such as chlorides, organic impurities, clay, and seashell. It also does not cause an alkaline aggregate reaction. Two, three, Sandy S. 7 to 28 days after concrete mortar is applied has a comprehensive strength equivalent to natural sand. This strength continues to increase over time. Consolidation is effectively prevented due to the addition of a unique consolidation inhibitor. The chemical composition and typical mechanical properties of sandy earth is it, it, you know, uh, we analyze it as follows. On Sandy S, the quality on fine concrete aggregate, you have about calcium oxide, sulfur, under the chemical composition now, sulfur, uh, trioxide, and iron oxide. So, you have about, under Sandy S, you have 43.1% of calcium, uh, calcium oxide. And then you have 1.0% uh, of sulfur. Then you have about 0.04% uh, uh, of uh, 
zero point zero four of the, the of the percent of the we are talking about the, in mass now zero point zero four percent of sulfur uh, sulfur sulfur oxide. Then you have zero point two seven of iron oxide. So those are the chemical compositions in mass. Sandy S also contains specific has a specific gravity of, of uh, two point seven six and has a coefficient of water absorption of zero point four five. Then has a mass of unit volume about one point five seven, which is all this in the the coefficient of water absorption is in, in percent in zero point four five percent. So and the, the gravity you know what that is and mass of the volume is uh, in kilogram per liter, which is one point five seven kilogram per liter. Let's look at the black funny slag sand capping material. One, I am gonna in the subsection of that I will address the outline of sand capping. Sand capping is a marine environment improvement technology that covers organic sea bottom sediments such as sludge layers with the sand in order to suppress the elution of nutrient salts that cause entroplication of seawater and hydrogen sulfide that cause blue tides. Sand capping suppress the lo lowering of the amount of oxygen dissolved in seawater, which is caused by the decomposition of organic matter contained in the bottom sediments. It also improves the uh, the grain size of seabird sand. This aspect help create an environment that is conducive to organism. Living on the seabed, in the past, mostly natural sand was used for sand capping. However, excavation of natural sand causes environmental destruction. Hence, a new material of sand capping has been sought. So you kind of have seawater with sand settled in the bottom. Then you have seabed, you have bottom sediments. The sediment just that uh, was at the bottom of this, uh, the bottom of the sand, below the sand. So you have some sedimentation there. Now, let's look at sand capping properties of black furnace slag. One, hydrogen sulfide genera generation suppression properties. In an experiment, blasphemy slag sand and beach sand were laid over bottom sediment. Hydrogen sulfide concentrations in, 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 test, in testi testicular water within each type of the sand layer were compared with that an untreated bottom sediment layer. The results are shown as follows. The hydrogen sulfide concentration in the inastitial water in the slag sand layer remain at level markedly lower than that in the untreated bottom sediment or beach state sand layer over a two-year period. It's a very long, uh, long stretch. The pH value of the Interstitial water in the slag sand layer remain at the level of 8.2 to 8.6. This result is supposed to be attributed to the effect of blast furnace slag. Now, looking at in suppressing the activity of a certain type of bacteria whose functioning is to redox is to redox sulfuric acid ions in seawater. Thus, the black furnace slag sand has a greater ability than natural sand in suppressing the generation of hydrogen sulfide and causes blue tides. 
changes of hydro, uh, hydrogen sulfide. And I told you again that hydrogen sulfide in, in uh, let me piggyback on the on the lecture number two, hydrogen sulfide is a rotten egg smell. So when you perceive hydrogen sulfide in a, in a lab, so you are perceiving the rotten egg smell. So I want you to be uh, cautious of that. You will have a rotten egg smell in this case. Now, the effect of filling silicate, number two, black alkalic or containers were placed, opening down on black furnace slag, sand laid over the bottom sediment, silicate uh, con concentrations of the seawater in the container were measured. The seawater in the area where, where black furnace slag sand was laid had higher silicate concentration than that of the area where beer bottom sediments was exposed. This is just this is an experiment now. It was confirmed that the blast furnace slag sand had the effect of feeding silicate to seawater. <clears throat> silicate concentrations of more than 0.28 ppm are required for the growth of diatoms. The primary food source of various organisms living in the sea, diatoms are said to compete with uh, diatoms are said to uh, said to compete. The, the, uh, in this case, diatoms are said to com to to make a, to have a competition with the primary food source for a various organism living in the sea. Diatoms are said to compete with the uh, dino. Flag, uh, flagrants that cause red tides. Hence, the diatoms are effective in the prevention of red tides. Black furnace slag sand has the potential of increasing the productivity of the sea and prevents red tides. It was observed that various marine organisms were living in the sea area where blast furnace slag sand was experimentally laid over the bottom sediment. Spe species identified in the uh, species identified included shrimp, fish such as goby, marine plants such as diatoms, and marine worms such as cl clam worm. The total diatoms and marine worms such as clam Clam worm, the total number of bentonic species living in the sea bottom sampling areas, each covered by blast furnace slag. Beach sand and untreated bottom sediment was counted, as well as the total number of individual organisms. The total wet weight was also measured. The result of this, uh, the result is shown as I am going to explain. It was concluded, confirmed, that far more than organisms lived in the slag-covered sea bottom area that the sediments cover area. Their number and weight were more than equal to those of organisms living in the area covered by beach sand. Both the number of species and number of individual organisms, organisms are affected by sand grain size. It is reported that more betonic organisms live in the sea bottom composed of sand of a larger grain size. Blast furnace slag sand has in intermediate grain size of 1.0 to 1.5 millimeter, which are larger than those of typical natural sand, which is Typical natural sand is 0 0.3 to uh, 1.0 millimeter. Hence, the blast furnace slag sand pre pre present the possibility of creating a sea bottom environment in which a more diverse range of marine organisms can live. So let's look at the observation in this case. So uh, observation results of uh, 
bentonic organism in granulated blast furnace like beach sand and bottom sediment. Feed application. In feed application, the NKK blast furnace like sand capping technology was recently adopted in the uh, NECA UMI seed purifications and sand capping project carried out by Ministry of Land. Infrastructure and transportation in Shiman, Shimen Prefecture, Perfe West Japan, which is Nakaumi, is an enclosed area of sea connected to the Sea of Japan by narrow channel. Now, let's look at the marine blocks used in the constructions of the artificial reefs, which, uh, which is the, the production technology. That's the one we will talk about right now. By forming steam making slag into cubes and solidifying, by solidifying them by injecting carbon dioxide solid, one cubic meter of blocks of slag were successfully produced. The NKK started marketing these blocks under the registered trade name. Marine blocks. Its marine blocks, its production technology properties and feed experiment using it for construction of artificial reefs and introduced below. Are introduced below. After adding an appropriate amount of water, steel making slag was packed into an air airtight mold. In order to solidify the slag, Carbon dioxide was injected through the bottom of the mold at a designated pressure. A large carbonated uh, solid block of slag was obtained. The carbonating reaction started from the bottom, gradually move up, finish when the, it reached the top of the mold. Various exhaust gases are usable as carbon dioxide. Sources, in order to prevent the slag from being dried by exhaust gas injection, the gas was kept saturated by steam. Large blocks of slag solidified by carbonation are shown in, are shown, becomes obvious. So the, micro, the microstructure of this carbonated slag block is shown as well, carbon dioxide was introduced into open pores and carbonated the slag particles around its flow paths. Thus, the slag particles were coated by calcium carbonate and firmly joined to each other. Open pores were distributed uniformly through the solidified block. Contrary to concrete blocks, the slag blocks did not show strong alkalinity when immersed in the seawater. Thanks to the microstructure, the rate of carbonation was nearly uniform through the slag block. Its porosity was 25% uh, compressive strength was 19 MPa, and density was about 2.4 gram per meter squared. This density was similar. This density was similar to that of a concrete block. One shortcoming of conventional carbonated block has been ex expansion cracking. The carbonated slag blocks shown here uh, that we realized here did not exp experience any expansion cracking, even five years after they were produced. This demonstrates their long-term stability. Now, let's look at the effect of absorbing carbon dioxide. The effect of absorbing carbon dioxide, theoretically speaking, one mole of carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide, which is 44, uh, 44 gram, is absorbed by one mole of calcium oxide which is 56 gram. When solidifying steel making slag by carbonation, the main source of carbon oxide 
in the slag are calcium silicate compounds such as calcium uh, calcium oxide plus uh, silica, silica which and calcium ox, uh, calcium carbonate oxide they form calcium carbonate and silica gel as a result of carbonating reaction steel making slag can have a wide variety of composition dictated by the steel making process applied when the slag has a calcium oxide content of 50 mass percent and the reaction rate is 50 percent one ton of slag can absorb 200 kilograms of calcium of, of, uh, of carbon dioxide if one four million tons out of all the slag produced each year in japan were used for absorbing carbon dioxide 800,000 tons of carbon dioxide will be fixed. This amount corresponds to 220,000 tons in carbon equivalent terms and is one tenth of the carbon dioxide emission reduction target based year in 1995. Established by the Japan Iron and Steel Federation in response to the uh, COP3 Kyoto Conference of 1997. Cultivating Marine Plants Experiment. The surface of the pores in the slag block is covered by calcium carbonate, the same substance that comprises coral reefs and seashells. An experiment, an experiment was performed to investigate the effect of slag blocks in cultivating marine resources, mainly marine plants. In November, in 19, November 1997, 25 cm cube, cube slag blocks were placed on the bottom of the inland sea of the coast of Setoda, town in Hiroshima. That is where an atomic bomb was dropped, was dropped in the Second World War. Prefecture and their surface were monitored. It was confirmed as early as by the end of January 1998 that marine plants were growing on the surface of the slag blocks and selfish adhere on the slag blocks surface. In summer of 1998, a green marine plants were proliferating on the slag blocks as shown in uh, as, as shown as discussed here the same types of marine plants were also growing on natural stones scattered around the slag blocks indicating the beneficial effects of slag blocks gave to the surrounding sea bottom now when we talk Now, when we talk about when we talk about uh, the view of the carbonated slag block on the sea bottom, marine plant growth on the slag blocks was compared with that of the granite blocks and concrete blocks in the same area of sea. All blocks were the same size, ten centimeters by ten centimeter, ten centimeters by ten centimeters by. Uh, one centimeter in cubic form <coughs> set on sea bottom and monitor for nine months period from April 1998 to January 1999. The number of sargassum plants growing on each type of block is, is also noticed. The slab blocks had the largest mean number of marine plants growing on the surface. This is experiment now that was performed. Now, in looking at that, the mean number of sargassum plants on slag, granite, and concrete blocks. A probable reason for this finding is, a, is as follows. The slag block was porous, and its surface had a roughness of about 328 <coughs> new rougher than concrete blocks of 373. 
273 mil. Granite blocks. The 16 mil, in contrast, the sargassum plant embroils were in the range of 100 to 300 mil. Thus, uh, mil per meter. Thus, the slab block had many more surface cavities, the size of which were larger than those of marine plant embroils, making their stay and growth on each surface easier. Making their uh, each surface easier. So, in this case, in addition, slag blocks did not exhibit strong alkalinity in seawater. This had a, benefic a beneficial effect on the growth of the embroil. In April 1999, 15 slag blocks, each with a one uh, meter square bottom and 50 centimeter in height, were piled up on the five meter deep sea bottom in a, a pyramid-like shape to investigate, to investigate the growth of large-sized marine plants and other or organisms. It was observed that large, a large number of fish gather in the space created by the slag blocks on which marine plants were growing. Now, in the next of this thing, marine environment improved improvement by combined use of the slag products. Showers have dis disappeared, disappeared in many coastal areas of Japan due to dredging of land and reclamation and beach sand excavation. Recreating showers in the areas are expected to bring about improvement in the marine environment through one, promoting the growth of the marine plant fish and other marine organisms. Two, oxygen production by marine plants. Three, effect of sand capping, including suppressing the elution, nutrient salt, and four, creating a sandy sea bottom where versatile betonic uh, organism can live. Now, the NKK, the NKK is developing a technology of recreating shores by combining iron and steel making slag products. Now, schematically in illustrate this technology, which is characterized by the fact that no natural materials are used. Combining the unique properties of sand capping material made from blast furnace slag and marine blocks made from steel making slag, we realize that currently demonstration tests for marine environment improvement are being carried out at Inoshina, Inoshima Island in Hiroshima Prefecture with the uh, financial support of the uh, pre 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 prefectural government. Now, in this case, in this project, about 100 tons, which is equivalent of 800 meter cubic of blast furnace slag, sand capping materials, and 20 marine blocks, both produced at NKK's uh, Fukuyama works, were used to improve the six, the 600 meter square area of seabed. Currently, flow up monitoring is being carried out to confirm the creation of the maintenance free artificial reef. Let's look at the slow release potassium silicate fertilizer producing production technology of uh, that. The effect of silica, which is SiO2, as a fertilizer is generating interest since it increases the resistance of rice to, be, uh, to various disease and vermin. Slag generated in the hot metal, the siliconization process is mainly composed of silica. Using this, uh, this, this, uh, this siliconization slag as the main material, a potassium silicate fertilizer has been developed. 
the newly developed fertilizer is difficult to dissolve in water and slowly dissolve in the weak centric acid released by plant roots. The low-release potassium silicate fertilizer is produced by adding a potassium material to uh, desiliconization of slag. This fertilizer contains potassium in slow releasing from, from which was effectively absorbed by plant. At the at the siliconization station in the hot metal pretreatment process, hot metal is first subjected to the siliconization treatment and then potassium carbonate, which is K2CO3, is continuously added into hot metal lando, lado from the hopper above the ladder, where agitating the hot metal using the nitrogen gas. Uniformly, uniformly metal slag is recovered from the hot metal's ladder, solidified by cooling and crushed into a granular form. Now, fertilizer properties. The chemical compositions of the slow-release potassium silicate fertilizer developed by NKK is shown is, is also analyzed here. Potassium oxide originating from the potassium carbonate and silica oxide with SiO2 originating from slag are the main constituents of 93% of the total potassium content. 75% of the total silica content have a slow release pro uh, property. It also contains other slow release constituents originating from the slag, such as calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, manganese oxide, and iron oxide. So, looking at the fertilizer, this fertilizer is composed of the victory portion and crystalline portion such as K2, Ca2, CiO2, O7. Both portions are slow release compounds. Due to the properties, this fertilizer is difficult to dissolve in water and thus is slowly released into the soil. Now, the effectiveness of as a fertilizer was investigated by the J Japan Fertilizer and Feed Inspection Association, various fertilizers, including NKKs, were applied to rice, garbage, spinach, and other vegetables. In every growth test, the NKK fertilizer showed its effectiveness being more than equal to other types of potassium. Silicate fertilizer. The results of the rice growth test are shown are also discovered here. The NKK fertilizer, potassium silicate fertilizer, and combined potassium chloride, calcium silicate fertilizer. These were addressed, which yield, uh, the, which yield about 63% of NKK potassium silicate fertilizer, 63.3% uh, gram, 63.3 gram of uh, potassium silicate fertilizer which absorb uh, about uh, potassium oxide about 1,334 uh, milligram uh, silicate, silicate about 1,423 milligram commercial potassium silicate fertilizer has about 61 0.5 gram. The absorbed materials then is about 983 uh, milligram. And another for silicate, it is about 1,326 milligram. When we look at the potassium chloride, calcium silicate, we have about 68 gram. It yields 68 gram. Then the absorbed or oxides, which is potassium oxide and silicate, or silicate, you have about 1,104 
milligram and 1,222 milligram. On that, for the control, potassium-free silicate, potassium-free and silicate-free, we have 41 percent uh, yield in grams. Then we have the absorb, which is potassium oxide, 319 for potassium uh, for pot uh, silicate. You have 795. In January 2000, 2000, as a result of this test, verifying the effectiveness of potassium and silicate fertilizer made from steel making slag, the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries of Japan issued a new official fertilizer standard, fused potassium silicate fertilizer. In notice of, no, of, of this base, on the fertilizer control law, the NKK register is fertilizer as MN containing 20 fused potassium silicate fertilizer with the Ministry of in April 2000 and started marketing in December 2001. Prospect of new fertilizer, iron and steel making slags has a long history in agricultural use. Blast furnace slag as a calcium silicate fertilizer and steel making slag as a soil conditioner. The zero slag process developed by NKK simplified the compositions of slag generated from hot metal treatment. It is believed this technology will further increase the effective use of slag as fertilizer in future. Conclusion In this study, Iron and steel making slag is being generated at a rate of 40 million tons per year in Japan. It is becoming increasingly important to use iron and steel making slag effectively in order to promote resource recycling. The NKK will continue to be a pioneer in developing new applications for slag and contribute to the establishment of recycling-oriented society. Now, that concludes the lesson for today, which the topic of the lesson was application for iron and steel making slag. So the applications of iron and steel making slag. I conclude this lesson for today. Thank you. Watch out for part four of my lecture. God bless.